up, guys? Josh Mall, the voice for Swimming Pool Science. Today, we are going to be going over pool care techniques for. God. We are going to be going over pool care techniques for above ground swimming pools and showing you all the tools for the job. Now, keep in mind, all the things I'm going to use today, I will post links in the description where you can get the same tools yourself. And I'll give you a couple extra links to some of our other videos that will be helpful to getting the job done right. Let's get started. All right, boys and girls, here's what we're dealing with. I got us a one inch floating tab dispenser uh, because we really don't need three inch tablets for a pool this small. We'd have our, our three inch tablet floater choked down so much that um, it would just be it would just be kind of ridiculous. So we got a little bit of adjustment here between our one inch tabs uh, of trichlor, which trichlor tabs, um, as you know, and from our uh, chlorine videos that trichlor lowers pH, chlorinates, and adds about six parts per million of stabilizer for every 10 parts per million of chlorine we add to the water. Um, I've also got our spa sanitizer here, also known as dichlor. So um, don't let spa sanitizer fool you. This is sodium dichlor s trion trion dihydrate, which is in short, trichlor. Uh, very similar to our dichlor, except this is nearly pH neutral. It adds nine parts per million of stabilizer to the water for every 10 parts per million of chlorine, which is why I'm gonna use it initially on startup for this, uh, to help get those uh, stabilizer levels up to help maintain good uh, chlorine and uh, good chlorine hold in the water. Uh, we've got our AquaCheck pH alkalinity and stabilizer test, and this is gonna be for the homeowner to use a test weekly. And then, you know, I'll, we'll be down here about once a month and uh, I'll do a big check with the Taylor test kit from time to time to make sure that's good. I've got some skillet algicide here. Now here's why I've got the skillet. One of the uh, side effects, for lack of a better term, of skillet is that it is a anti it is a, or not an anti-surfectant, but a surfectant. What a surfectant does is it makes the water wetter. It has the same same effect as liquid soap. If you ever um, did the experiment where you, you put pepper in a, in, a, in a bowl of water and you put a drop of liquid soap, you'll see the pepper scatter to the edges. And that's because this also, in addition to um, helping uh, kill algae, um, acts as a surfectant, which means that when we get wasps and hornets and bees that come down to take a drink of water, they're going to find that they don't like the pool because they can't sit on the they can't sit on the water. It just it makes the water wetter and they don't like it. So it's going to keep the bees and the wasps away, which will help a little bit. I've got some phosphate remover, which we may probably not even use at all. We'll check. I don't know. Just in my bag, and I forgot to leave it in Phoenix. Down here. We got our basic skimmer net. We don't need anything too big and fancy. This one's got a little bit of a lip on it so I can scoop stuff up off the bottom of the of the pool when I need to, but I can also get all the moths and the leaves and everything that the skimmer, um, the skimmer basket doesn't get itself. I've got a little 18 inch nylon brush and this nylon's important. We do not want any steel in this. No combination brushes, no stainless steel brushes, nylon only on that vinyl interior. Uh, these two guys right here, why I got these is because our equipment is lower than our water level, which means if I go to service that filter or I go to service that pump and clean the basket out, uh, it's gonna act like unplugging the drain plug on a bathtub. So I've got this guy for the skimmer and I've got this guy to go on the return so I can just easily plug those lines while I'm servicing the pool equipment and, uh, and that'll take care of that. And then here's my pole here and I got a little four foot pole that extends out to eight feet. And the good thing about this is especially when you're having to reach over on, a, on above ground, you're not standing at, um, you're not standing at grade with a, with an in-ground pool. Uh, the shorter pole is actually a little easier to, to wield around, and I can I can stretch it out to eight feet, so I have no problem reaching the center if I need to. And it's just a, it's just an easier, more convenient setup. Of course, there's more simple setups that you can get, but I like this setup because we got a good net that's going to last me a lot of years. A good brush is going to last me a lot of years if I don't leave it out in the sun, and a pole that effectively as a homeowner would nearly last me forever or maybe even a decade as long as I take care of it. So uh, let's get started. Let's get some of the stuff in the water. Now, I personally am not a fan of test strips. I like my Taylor K2005 test kit right here. All of the bells and whistles, everything. I can get exact numbers. I can check different things from acid demand to chlorine demand, to calcium to this to that, and uh, sometimes the other thing. But 
where test strips come in handy is when I just need to do a quick check, we don't need to get too deep into the water chemistry. So what I recommend for homeowners is keeping test strips on hand inside the kitchen in a drawer where they can stay nice and cool, following the directions to the letter, boop, 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 and just checking once a week. Once a month, that's when you do your full test. You either take it to your favorite mom and pop pool shop or to another place and you do your full test and that way you know generally which direction your water chemistry is headed and what you've got to do for preventative maintenance. All right, so I just did a quick test of the water with my Taylor kit and we're showing a zero chlorine level, about a 7.8 on the pH and about a 90 on our alkalinity. Uh, I've got zero on the cyanuric acid or stabilizer levels. So we're gonna make sure and get that up. But right now we're gonna get our chlorine floater going. What I really like about this uh, Pentair Rainbow one inch uh, chlorine and bromine floater is that uh, you really have some good fine tuning here. All I do is I screw this guy up and then that bottom opens up and then this top collar, I screw that down and that gets me right where I need to be and I can really, really fine tune this thing. So uh, given that our pH is a little on the high side and of course the one thing I didn't bring was acid with me. Um, we are going to open this up um, a fair amount and we're going to fill this up with about five or six tabs and so we're going to let that chlorine come up and then the, the chlorine tabs uh, being that they're trichlor are going to push that pH down and get that nudge down closer to a 7.5 where we want it. Now our above ground pool is no different than any other pool and we want that chlorine ideally between that two and four parts per million. There we go, we'll start with that. We got it set at one. It's a nice two, they got numbers up and down here so you can easily set this thing exactly where you want it. And we're just a little more than, or just a little less than one. So we're gonna pop that in the pool. And that is as simple as that. Now, we wanna get our chlorine levels up and our stabilizer levels up. So now we're gonna do our dichlor. And we do this a little di differently. Anytime on a vinyl liner pool, we are adding any kind of chlorine that's not going in some kind of self-contained floater or we're adding acid, we need this guy. A clean bucket that we can fill with water. And then add our chemical. This is a one pound, I'm about, about half a pound. And of course, just a reminder, directions are always on the back with recommended dosages and anything like that. Always pay attention to what's on the back and on the labels for recommended dosage. Now, you can do this with a stick, you can do it however you want. I'm gonna use my hand. Remember, my hand isn't your hand. I know there's gonna be some armchair quarterbacks that lay into me for not wearing a glove or wearing some kind of giant body condom to do this, but I'm gonna mix this stuff around. Dichlor is, like I said, pH neutral, but it is very concentrated in chlorine, which was why we use it for chlorine. And if it's left to just sit on that vinyl surface, at the very least, it's going to bleach that surface and whatever pattern you have on your vinyl, that's gonna go away for good. So you can see I've got this diluted and there's still a few minor granules left that are floating around that are stubborn that haven't quite dissolved. But for the most part, this is good and dissolved well enough that we're gonna go ahead and pour it in our pool. That is running, so it'll circulate. Now of course, right after I add chems, not the time to go swimming. We'll come back in a couple hours and retest this water. If it's good to go swimming, we'll let the kids play, but for now, we're trying to get this thing balanced. So no swimming. You can see this stuff's pretty thick and gloppy, almost like honey or syrup. And this, I can add directly to the water. It will mix in, it will dilute, and it's not gonna harm my surface. So before I empty my baskets, 
all this stuff is below water level. I need to plug some lines. So I got these great expandable rubber plugs, uh, which I encourage you to get. But first, before you do, measure the openings of your skimmer and your return. I just guessed on the return. I got the size just too big. I did get it to work, but I really had to wedge it in. So it's gonna work, but it's gonna be a pain in the butt. I got this one for the skimmer, and all you do, you put the plug in, tighten this guy up, and it gives you a nice tight seal on your skimmer and on your return. Ooh, dead moth party in there. And this guy goes. A couple little turns. Cool, we're sealed up tight. Now I still may get a little bit of water just seeping and dripping out of this, but no big deal. We can manage that. That's that. Oh yeah, before I forget, make sure and take your plugs out before you uh, do anything else because then you'll fire up the system and it will cavitate and not run right. And you'll spend maybe a minute or so trying to figure out what's wrong until you realize, duh, I forgot the plugs. Oh my. Plug right here, a little too big, but you can get these in various sizes, so no big deal. This would be a, uh, this is a three quarter inch. I should have got a half inch because the opening on my return is actually a half inch opening, but I was just able to squeeze that on there and, uh, and make it work. So no harm, no foul. All right, boys and girls and everyone in between, now that we got our chemicals dialed in, we're gonna do some brushing and some skimming. Skimming first, now believe it or not, well, some of you may know this from sifting through my videos, but I have not made a how to clean your swimming pool video, which I'm going to get on that. And I promise you by end of summer, we'll have that up. But I'll give you a little preview and a hint of how we do things now. What I like to do, I like to do all my skimming first to get the big debris off. Because if I do my brushing first and there's any little leaves at the bottom of the pool or anything like that, well, I'm going to get those suspended and they're going to be very difficult to scoop off as opposed to if they're just resting in a pile on the ground like we sort of have here. Uh, my skimmer is working really well on this above ground pool, so it's not like I need to do a whole lot of work to skim off all the surface debris, but by skimming off the surface debris, I get the stuff before it clogs up the skimmer basket or it settles to the bottom and starts to decompose and uh, absorb valuable chlorine. My pole is great. This is what they call a cam lock post where I twist the telescoping part and it comes loose and I can slide it in and out. Give it a little turn this way like a motorcycle throttle and it locks itself in place. The only drawback is if I crank this down too hard, it might not be able to get unlocked. They do make collar locking posts, which I tend to prefer when I'm doing my big pools. But, uh, but this one for this pool is just fine. We're getting our debris out of the bottom. This net has a pretty decent lip. There are nets out there that have better lips on it that will do a little bit better of a job, but you just kind of push and scoop, push and scoop. You agitate it with the first little push and then scoop up what kicks up and then jerk the net back and you'll get it all cleaned up, no problem. I also like to get toys out of the pool because those are some extra things that they just sit down there and it's more stuff for algae to grow on, so I like to get all that stuff out and put away. Now what's nice about these poles, net, and brushes is that they're easily detachable. I've got these two tabs right here that I just squeeze in and then it allows this to slide all the way in like this and connect. And you want to undo it, it's just a matter of squeezing these guys in, turning, and it slides out. Really fast like me, you do it like this, it's in, and you're done, it comes out like that. Time to brush. I like to brush when my pool is running. I like to brush the walls. I like to brush any benches, any steps, any surface, the floor of the pool. It's important to just like brushing your teeth, you want to brush your pool once a week. Brushing plays an important role in algae present, pre prevention in that it loosens anything that might be trying to take root to the surface and a wrinkle on your uh, floor or any place like that allows us to get fresh chemicals 
and it's a lot truck. Get fresh chemicals in on that, that surface, and we can kill any algae that's starting to try and grow. It's also going to stir things up so that that skimmer can pick up any of that dirty, dusty water, and then the filter is going to trap it. And when we're done cleaning and maintaining the pool, if you don't have a place close to the pool for the uh, pole, the net, and the brush, it's always good to just find a, uh, a cool shaded place to store these things uh, where they're out of the way and uh, you know the kids can't play with them and mess with them. There we go. It's a little dry place right there. I've got my brush in the up position facing away so that the bristles don't get uh, deflected and the shape doesn't change. So just like I have that in the shade, that's gonna be the best way to take care of those brushes and bristles. Uh, I have got these chemicals in this bucket that I was using to dilute them. Now, of course, rule number one when it comes to chlorine is you never store chlorines together. Here's the deal with this though, guys. This chlorine is in its own separate container. This chlorine is in its own separate container. I am going to be storing this away in a stationary position. This won't be driving around in the back of my truck um, and where nothing can get or anything can get damaged or jostled around where these two could potentially mix. So right now, this is a safe way to store these. But, you know, if you can help it, don't ever store two different types of chlorines together. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. One major piece of the puzzle that I did not add into here was a vacuum. So I'll make sure and get also uh, a vacuum and a hose posted in the link. But it's pretty self-explanatory. It's pretty straightforward. You fill that water with hose, and you connect it in your skimmer, turn the system on, and you are ready to do some vacuuming. And uh, right, with that, it's time for me to roll. If you like this video, don't forget to share. Make sure and subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next one.